Today I'm going to cover the configuration and preferences that I use in Autodesk Fusion 360. My preferences are targeted toward the fact that I am designing models that I can print on a couple of home 3D printers, hobbyist CNC machines, or a laser cutter. One of the first things that I can see when I open Fusion 360 for the first time is the 3D cube in the upper right hand corner that shows you what view or perspective that you are looking at at any given time. We can clearly see that the Y axis is oriented vertically from top to bottom in this model. My CNC machines and 3D printers use the Z axis as the vertical axis, so I will need to change this orientation in the preferences. Now if I go down here to the display settings, I want to go into the effects menu and turn off ambient occlusion. With this option turned on, Fusion 360 will simulate how light is blocked by portions of your model, which may make different areas of your model appear as slightly different colors or shades, which I don't like when I am designing those models. You can always open an existing model and turn this option on and off to see how it impacts the coloring and shading of your projects. Also, under the Grid and Snaps menu, I want to turn off the Layout Grid, which I find distracting in the main window. In addition, I turn off the Snap to Grid option since I rarely need to snap objects or sketches to the grid and this will sometimes make it more difficult to tell if I have snapped a line or shape to the point that I really want it to be snapped to on a model. Up on the toolbar, I remove items that have keyboard shortcuts since I can easily call them up with the keyboard and they take up valuable screen real estate. Under the sketch menu, I will find the line option and click on the X over to the right to remove it from the toolbar. I will do the same thing for the two point rectangle. However, I am going to add the three point rectangle to the toolbar by clicking on the up arrow next to that option on the menu. And I'm also going to add the two point circle, the three point arc, the ellipse, and the center to center slot along with the fillet. Now I also want to add a couple of options from the sketch menu that are unavailable at the moment and are grayed out. To make them available, I will click on the symbol to create a new sketch and click on any plane. And then under the sketch menu, I can now add the rectangular pattern and the mirror to the toolbar. With those added, I can now Command-Z on my Mac or Control-C on a PC to undo that sketch that I just created since I don't need it anymore. Under the Create menu, I will remove the Create Form option uh, since I don't use that one. However, I will add the New Component option, the box, the rectangular pattern, and the mirror. Then under the Modify menu, I will add the Fillet, the Combine tool, the Align tool, and the Physical Material option. Under the Assemble menu, I will remove the joint, since there's a keyboard shortcut available, but I will also add back the joint origin and the rigid group, and I will remove the New Component option, since I've already added that to the Create menu. Under the Construct menu, I will simply add the Midplane option, since that is the one that I use the most in addition to the standard offset plane. Under the Select menu, I will find the Selection filters, and I will uncheck the option to Select Through. That option is pretty neat because it allows you to select objects that are behind other objects but I find it a little annoying because when I want to select the object in front, it will sometimes mis-select uh, what I'm looking for. So I turn that one off and I can always turn it back on when I need it for a really complex model where it's really useful. The last thing that I want to do before changing any preferences is create a custom material that I will use as my default material for all models going forward. To do that, I will press A on my keyboard to bring up the appearance dialog. 
And then under the Fusion 360 Appearances tab, I will find the Wood category and the Unfinished subcategory. Then I will find the MDF board material. And if there's a little down arrow on the right hand side of this, that means that it's not uh, installed on your machine. So you need to click on that arrow to download it and make it available. Once it's available, I will right click on it and select the option to add it to my favorites. And then I will drag and drop it up to the in this design box. Once it's in that box, I will then right click on it and select the option to duplicate it. So now I have the MDF board one material. If I right click on this new material, I can select the option to edit it. So when that comes up, I will click on the advanced button. This may take a second or two for the, the dialog to come up, but once it comes up, Next to the preview window, I will click on the little Taurus symbol and select the scene menu and then canvas, which will change the view to a flat sample material. Then I will click on the little arrow next to the image under the parameters and change the brightness from 100 to 50. This gives me the same texture as the default MDF material but makes it darker so that I can simulate what the material looks like when it is cut on a laser cutter. So with that, I will click on Done in the Texture Editor, and then in the Material Editor, I will rename the material from MDF Board 1 to Laser Cut MDF, and then I will click on OK to close out the Material Editor. Now I have the default MDF board, and my laser cut MDF material. Next, I will right click on the laser cut MDF that I just created, and I will select the option to copy it to my appearances, and then I will right click on it again and select the option to add it to my favorites. Now we can go up to the Fusion 360 preferences and make some changes. Remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that the default in Fusion 360 is to have the Y axis oriented vertically, but on my CNC machines and 3D printers, it's the Z axis that's actually the vertical axis. So the first thing that I wanna change in the preferences is the default modeling orientation, and I wanna change that from Y up to Z up, so that the Z axis becomes my vertical. Then I will go under the general API category and I will change the default language for scripts and add-ons to Python. I change this one only because I've experimented with writing scripts for Fusion 360 in the past and I prefer Python for that purpose. There's no reason to change these settings if you're not writing scripts and it has no impact on your ability to use third-party scripts or add-ins. Under the general design settings, I change the default workspace to model, since that's the workspace I use the most. And then under the general cam settings, I set an external editor so that I can easily open up cam files that are created by the cam post processors. And since I'm on a Mac I, and I'm using Sublime Text as my primary editor, that's the one that I use here, but you can use any text editor that will allow you to open uh, plain text files from the command line. I also enable the cloud libraries option here. Since I have my CAM post processors installed in the cloud in the Autodesk uh, 360 cloud environment. Now under the material settings, this is where I'm going to use the custom material that I created previously. First, in the physical material settings, I will select the wood category from the Fusion 360 material library. And then I will select the physical material name of MDF medium density fiberboard. Next, I will check the option to apply a different appearance since I want Fusion 360 to apply a custom appearance that's different than the one that's part of the MDF physical material. 
once that's checked, then I go under the Appearance Material Library. I will select the Favorites Library, which is why I had to add my laser cut MDF to Favorites. And then I will make sure that the Appearance category is wood slash unfinished and the material name is laser cut MDF. If this is the only custom material you've created, then most likely those two settings will be set automatically. With that, that covers all of the preferences that I, I need to change in my configuration. Uh, one thing to note is that under the design and cam areas here, the default units are set to millimeters. I found this to be the most accurate and consistent across the 3D printers, hobbyist CNC machines, and laser cutter that I use. So I leave these alone, but the default units can be changed in any individual project if necessary. And any input that allows me to input units will also allow me to manually specify the units for that particular measurement. So it is possible to combine imperial and metric units in any design. With the preferences all configured, I can click on OK to close out the dialog and go back to the Fusion 360 main window. Now if I click on File, New Design, and then Create a New Box, I can quickly see that the custom material I created and the appearance that I created and configured in the preferences is applied to my object. The reason that I use this custom material is so that I can get a clear visual representation of what my projects will look like when I prototype them with uh, MDF material that's cut on the laser cutter. Since I am using a Glowforge laser, I often prototype my projects with their proof grade draft board material, and this allows me to see something on my screen that will look very similar to the physical prototype. But looking at the box that I just created, all of the faces have the same material appearance, which is the laser cut MDF darker colored material that I created to simulate the lasered edge. In order to give the larger faces the look of plain MDF that wasn't directly touched by the laser, I can apply another appearance directly to those larger faces. So I press A on my keyboard to bring up the appearances dialog again. And then first I will select the option for faces under the apply to section. And then under the library section, I will open my favorites where I can see the MDF board and laser cut MDF options. And I will simply select the MDF board option, the default Fusion 360 MDF board, and drag and drop it over the larger faces of the top and bottom of the box that I just created. And now we can see in the model that the edges have that darker laser cut look while the faces look like untouched MDF. If I had set MDF as my default and then tried to apply the laser cut MDF appearance to all of the laser cut edges, I would have to manually drag and drop to multiple faces, which could become cumbersome in a model that has 30 or 40 finger joints or more. So by using the darker appearance as my default, it becomes very easy to drag and drop the lighter appearance on the largest faces, and typically it's only two faces on any given body. If I look at this open top box project, you can easily see what the project looks like when the MDF board appearance has been applied to the larger faces of all of the bodies, and the laser cut MDF appearance that was applied by default makes my box look like it was laser cut and glued together. So that's it for the preferences that I use. There are many more that I have had no reason to explore or change, but these preferences have served me well over the last couple of years on my CNC and 3D printers, and now on my laser. If you found this video useful, please leave suggestions, questions, or criticisms in the comments below. Uh, I hope you found it useful, and I look forward to further demonstrating how some of these preferences impact my designs in future projects.